Welcome to the Acorn Deck House Company first Deck House Discussion Seminar. My name is Steve Kay, if you don't know that. We have a special guest speaker, Vincent Burke. Hello. He is from Sitco and is our glass expert. Right? And as I told you, I'm the expert because I've been here for 25 years calling on this account. So, <laughs> so tonight we're going to talk about glass, how to improve the efficiency of the glass in your homes, and seal figures and other things with deck houses. So deck house started in 1959, and a lot of the houses, for the first, I'd say about 10 years, had single pane glass. Not insulated glass, no low E coating, single pane glass. Your operable windows have... Um, a hope sash, steel. Mostly single pane, some insulated. Single pane, like I said, does not have a low E coating or, or an argon filled glass. A low E coating in simple terms helps heat your summer, heat your summer, <laughs> heat your house in the winter time and cool it off a little more in the, in the summer. Is that right? Yeah, it is. What the low E coating is a, um, it's a metallic coating on the glass, and uh, the newer coatings have multiple layers, are very microscopic, thin, uh, usually double silver or sometimes titanium layers. And what it does is reflect the long-range radiation wavelengths. So it will actually uh, reflect the sun's uh, energy and keep your house cooler in the summertime, and in the wintertime it actually reflects the heat back. It works both ways as a metallic coating, and it will reflect the heat back into your house and keep it warmer. And, we know what this winter was like, and I assume that's why you're all here, because of your heating bills and, uh, and the cost of gas and everything has quadrupled, and, uh, and you're all looking to better improve your glass performance. So if you tried to buy a piece of glass today that was installed a few years ago, you might notice most likely there's going to be a color difference. Insulating glass started out in the 50s in the commercial industry, where they take two pieces of glass and uh, seal them with an airspace and put a ceiling around them. And we'll get a little bit more into that in a bit, but um, back in uh, the 60s or so, they started making it for the residential use, insulated glass. And in the 70s, a couple of gentlemen from MIT uh, started experimenting and came out with low E glass. And that's when it really started in the industry. It Re really wasn't until the 80s that the residential market started uh, using low E. And, uh, and it's changed from that point on. I mean, it's continuously changing. Originally, it was just a hard coat OE, and now what they have is what they call a sputter coat or a soft coat, which is a high performance glass. And that's what the deck house sells. They sell one of the better products on the market. The old coatings used to have, like, when they first came up, purplish tin to them and stuff, and a uh, to it. So when you looked at those houses, in fact, I get calls now if I can match that purple color, and it's, it's impossible to try to match the old OEs to the new stuff. So every few years, glass technology changes. So if you purchased a piece of glass five, six years ago, and you wanted to match a piece of glass next to it, it's not a 100% chance that that's going to match. Most likely, it's going to be a slightly different hue. You may never notice it, but maybe 5.30 in the morning as the sun's coming up in the middle of the summer, you might notice it. But otherwise, there's really not much you can do it to match exa uh, glass exactly. The other reason for that is because there's multiple manufacturers of glass. You have the major float glass manufacturers, a company called PPG is, is what the um, deck houses use. They use a solar band product. Then you have Guardian that has SunGuard products and you got Pilkington and AGC. And every one of those low E's is slightly different. So it's good to continuously work with a company that's going to provide the same type of products year after year. So you get at least a better chance of matching the glass. So the insulated glass was introduced with basically air between the glass, not argon like we do today. This greatly reduced um, conduction in the glass. Has anyone ever touched a piece of single glazed glass in the middle of winter? It is freezing. It's the same thing with your, your steel, the uh, Hope Steel Sash. You touch that, it's, it's the same temperature as the exterior. Also, in single pane glass, when you turn on your heat or the heat comes on in the morning and it's ver the glass is very cold, you probably experience uh, condensation of the glass which drips down onto your mahogany. Now you're wiping off the mahogany that might be stained unless you sand it down and reseal it, but you're still gonna have that condensation going right on top of the, the sill. The U value is four times better than the glass we did is at single pane. So it's, it's really gonna help save you money. Go for glass, you got single pane. What we have today has a nighttime uh, center of glass, nighttime winter U value of 0.25. For energy tax credit reasons, mostly it's uh, windows and doors, but they ask for a 
0.3. The lower the number, the better. So we have 0.25 on our glass. It's obviously better when you look at it in a U-value standpoint. And, and to break it down in simple terms, like everyone's used to the R factor of windows and walls yeah. and everything else. A single pane of glass has an R value of one, basically, and this is just the simplest terms. If you have an insulating unit like you had, you told me it was just a clear glass insulating unit, that has a roughly a, an R value of two. If you add low E to it, it adds an R value of three. If you add argon to it, it adds an R value of four. So now, but you can continuously change that and tweak it a little bit by using the more the high performance glasses and some of the, the terminology out there is warm edge technology and uh, you know thermally broken spaces, different types of things to break that thermal barrier from the outside to the inside. So, but I hope that helps kind of understand the basics of R value because people understand that a little bit more than the U value. Don't let anyone tell you you need to replace your window. You only need to replace the glass. Most of the time we can take a single glazed piece of glass and make it at least 5 eighths of an inch thick. Don't let anyone say, oh, you need to replace the entire window. All you need to do is replace that piece of glass with an insulated unit, all right? Conservatories. Who here has a conservatory? Slanted glass on the roof? Okay. Um, the conservatory was designed for passive solar, and it's very good for passive solar. Um, it's set at an angle so it allows more sunlight through to heat most likely a tile floor, and in the winter time, you probably almost don't need to turn on the heat or maybe the heat doesn't come on quite a bit. But the same reason for that slant with the sun coming in, the worst, the biggest enemy of insulated glass is sun. What windows are made to let sunlight in, but it also, that's what causes seal failures. So along with sunlight, wind, rain on conservatories, that'll break down paint, stain, silicone, so you need to keep up with the maintenance on that about every six months, not something you want to hear. But um, we'll, we can talk about that if you're coming to a, a later seminar on maintenance on the exterior. We can go a little more on that. Films. Uh, you don't want to add a third party film to glass. It, it voids the, the manufacturer warranty on glass. I had a woman call up from Maryland who wanted to uh, block out a little more of the UV rays uh, to reduce fading. She spent three grand putting uh, a third party film on the glass and within two weeks, several units cracked from heat. And yeah, she had to spend, I don't know how much more on replacing those same units. And I'd have to assume that those people did not um, warranty labor going in to replace that glass. Any aftermarket film on, on glass voids any manufacturer's warranty and it's called thermal stress. And it's just a heat buildup and normally it's the inner light that cracks first. And, uh, it's a known, I, I get called all the time that they just installed an insulating unit at a bank or a McDonald's or another facility and they put the posters in the windows and as soon as the sun hits it, this usually it heats that center section up and it's about a 50 degree temperature difference between to the center and the edge of the glass, especially in the morning time when it's cool out and it cracks the glass and that's why, you know, you, if you're going to do a film or any type of, you know, posters in your windows, the glass has to be heat treated or, or tempered. Also, going back to conservatories, if you replace a piece of glass in a conservatory, there is no warranty on that glass. If there's a seal failure within two weeks, you have to get another, another piece of glass. So that it's not warranted on the, on the slant, okay? I'll tell you a little bit, if I can, about myself. I've been in the industry 27 years now. Uh, with a part supplier to the industry for 12 years and 15 years with two major glass fabricators, I work for a company called Sidco, and uh, we're in New England's largest independent glass fabricator. What we do is we buy glass from the major float manufacturers, PPG, Guardian, AGC, and Pilkington, and we turn it into glass products. Our main product that we produce is insulating window units. And as Steve and I have been saying, there's a lot of different products on the market now. There are some that are better that we have and some that are cheaper that we have, and there's all different types of manufacturers too. You know, uh, you can go to a glass shop and buy a cheaper insulating unit or you can buy a good insulating unit. Prices and everything, labor, as Steve mentioned, no one, you know, uh, actually pays for labor. Normally it's they replace the insulating unit. But we were talking about low ease and uh, the market. I got something on the screen that's sideways, if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, the market's changed a lot. And as, as we mentioned, originally back in the 70s, they came out with a product called Heat Mirror. 
and uh, it was a film in between the glass and it's great thermal properties and it really uh, makes the units energy efficient. It's very expensive and you can only get it in certain locations. And there are other coated products on the market too. If, if, if you're looking at different things like Viracon, they make another very good coating on a low E, but a minimum cost to the glazer is $1,500 for a replacement for one unit, never mind trying to buy five or 10 of them. And also, uh, some of these customers here may have uh, heat mirror in their house, heat uh -huh. mirror glass. We did that. Molly, do you know what year? They'll know they have it because they won't get a C out of it. Gotcha. <laughs> it kind of looks like um, crinkled up um, cellophane between the glass, maybe torn, something like that. But what Deck House buys from us is a product called Solar Band 60, and it's really the number one product on the market right now, and it's been in the market for at least 10 years. It's a high performance low E, and a low E is basically just metallic coatings that are put onto the glass at the factory. And they go through a long process where they're actually, um, it goes in, I don't mean too technical, but vacuum deposition, it goes through this chamber, they take uh, clear or, or tint uh, float glass and they place it through and it flashes in in different chambers onto the glass, all these metallic coatings. And what people don't realize when you're looking, and all of this is solar band 60, that's about 14 coatings of uh, different silvers and uh, coatings onto the glass itself. It's not completely clear, but they call it color neutral. And uh, it's one of the best performing products on the market now. Within the last couple of years, they've tweaked it a little bit where you can get into these solar band 70s and other coatings that give a little bit more performance, but you pay a lot more for that. And realistically, the cost difference to the homeowner, it would take you a long time to make that up in the energy efficiency of your house. There are also different types of edge, as I mentioned, warm edge conditions that you can do. Uh, you know, you can do thermally broken spaces. They have a re regular aluminum box break spaces. Every one of those little items gains you a little bit more. Um, deck houses uses a thermally broken spacer on the patio side as it actually is a, it's a barrier between the spacer itself. It's thermally broken and then the two lights of glass are sealed onto that. We get a lot of questions from customers looking to take glass their single pane or double pane and, and want triple pane glass. Triple pane glass is good, but you can reach the same U values and, and same values of double pane glass as you can triple pane. So if someone said, oh, you need to get triple pane glass, no, if you want a good, a good insulating piece of glass, call me up, tell me the U values and the, the qualities you want of that glass. I'll talk to Vincent, we'll work together and get you that glass with the same U value. With a triple pane piece of glass, now you're, you're adding weight, much more weight to the, to the unit, whether it's an operable, which I wouldn't recommend if it was an operable, because now it's adding a lot more weight to, to hinges or, or rollers. But also, it, to me, it seems like there's now two areas where a place can, can fail. On a double pane, you have one chamber. On a triple pane, you now have two chambers. So to me, that almost seems like it would double the, the chances of a failure of, of that glass, a sale failure. It's the weight and the cost, you know, you, you, because you're adding that extra spacer yep. and you're adding an extra light of glass. The cost difference between using a, more of a high performance glass with a, you know, you can almost go with two low E's, you know, low E on number two and, and then, <laughs> I don't mean, in a low E on number four surface in order to get that same value and uh, with less cost and less weight because in, with the, the weight, you're gonna have to change all your balances and everything else in your windows. And if you don't, then things are gonna be slamming down on you. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if any of you, if you have a, if a single light of glass, you're not having seal failure, but seal failure happens. Um, the sealant, it's basically when water penetrates the edge of, this, of the insulating unit oh. and, and absorbs into the inner chamber and you get the moisture. And there are many different conditions for that. Sealants have changed a lot over the last few years. Um, originally when they first came out, it was a single seal unit. They used to use uh, galvanized spacers, galvanized in steel spacers. They had rust inside the unit, caused seal failure. They, they have, uh, you know, polysulfides. They'd use hot melt butyl, all these different sealants on the outside of the, of the unit. Now, most standard units, people go with a dual seal, uh, primary seal, a polysulfide, PIB, which is a good barrier for water penetration, as well as it retains argon 
the different inert gases that you want to put into your unit to help improve the thermal performance of the insulating unit. So that's a pretty much standard now, uh, polysulfide uh, PIB uh, single seal with a uh, secondary seal of silicone, and that's for the structural integrity of the uh, insulating unit. And that's what the deck house uses. Uh, most of the time I, I get asked if uh, you can change a uh, single pane piece of glass to an insulated piece, and that's definitely a yes. Um, today we use a 7 8 thick total thickness glass. It's 3 16 glass, half inch bronze spacer, 3 16 glass with a, the um, solar band 60 on the third surface? Second surface. Second surface. Yep. That's why he's here. Um, and that can easily be done, but with the, if you have single pane glass, a lot of times we won't go 7 8 We'll go as much as we can without that. Um, they stop bead going beyond the window frame to create a, a shelf for water to collect and damage damage the unit. So um, for the most part, if you have single single glazed glass, you can go up to probably five eighths, maybe three quarters. And with a good builder, he might even be able to get it more. But it's going to cost a little more because he has to go into the depth of the mahogany window. You don't have to replace the window, just the just the fixed glass. When it comes down to the um, the steel sash. In 1978, maybe 1977, we started manufacturing our own um, mahogany sash, casements and awnings. And what they did is they took those window units and broke them down into pieces and parts to go into to, re to replace the old steel. So when that steel casement is taken out and the new uh, replacement sash is put in, it looks like the windows we use today. One other question I get asked a lot from my customers when the customers come into the shops, can you just replace one light of glass on an insulating unit if the unit's failed? And there's, there's companies out there also yeah. that claim that they can take out the seal failure out of an insulating unit. They'll come to your house and try to drill a little mm -hmm. hole on the side of the unit and suck the moisture out of the unit. You cannot, if a unit fails, it fails and you need to replace it. You just can't cut off one light of glass and hopefully retain any of the uh, yeah you know. well I think for two reasons one how do you know where the air is getting in so they might have just cleaned it and resealed it and just taken your money but the air is still going to get back in there not only that the when air gets in there it brings in moisture when it brings in moisture it brings in minerals when those when the moisture evaporates it's leaving minerals on the glass I can't personally see how someone can take a piece of glass like back there clean that out completely reseal it and tell you you're all set. I just can't see getting a piece of glass that clean after it's already failed. If anyone needs any work done on the deck house, we Let's recommend calling one. someone who knows deck house first. I don't know if anyone's gotten into trouble hiring someone that didn't know deck house, but I've heard all the horror stories. <laughs> Paying to have something done, then pay again to have someone do it the right way. Some of these guys might be more than who you've talked to in the past, but in the end when, when Contractor A gets done what he's doing, he's most likely going to be more than the, deck, the contractor who knows deck house because he didn't know what he was getting into. I'm not saying you have to on every aspect of your home. Call me. I'll, I'll help you out as much as I can, give you as many builds as I can in your area, and if, if you don't feel comfortable with who they are, call me up. I'll give you more. <laughs>